Hi, uh, we're going to go over art as meditation um, this week. And, uh, you know, as usual, there's a chapter in your book called Art as Meditation. So uh, read that. And I have, a, as usual, I have a PowerPoint to go over. And as usual, there's uh, homework. This week, it's, uh, I would say, homework light. It's not, not too bad. Uh, it's just uh, discussion. And what I'm asking you to do is to um, find an artwork that you think uh, is a good example of um, art and meditation. So after you listen to the PowerPoint, um, then you can pick one out and uh, ask for all the information on the artwork and then just for you to write a sentence about what, you know, what had you choose that particular artwork uh, for this for this topic. So I'm going to go ahead here and get started. Um, this first artist, well, the, uh, before I get started, <laughs> the artist meditation is divided up into three sections. And the first one is artists who made artwork uh, while they were in a meditative state. And then the next is um, uh, meditated by dissecting. So kind of breaking things down into its elements. Um, and then works to meditate with. So this is artwork that uh, the viewer uh, can get into a meditative state, hopefully, uh, while looking, looking at the artwork. Uh, the first artist is a German artist, Gerhard Richter. And in the midterms, I noticed um, several of you chose uh, some of his images, particularly there's one, it's not in these slides, but it's the woman walking down the staircase. It's actually, he screened a photograph onto a canvas and then um, scraped across it. So it was a very good example of motion. Um, anyway, uh, that's how he makes these pieces also. Uh, if you're interested, there are videos online you can look up. He will take, um, uh, well, first of all, when you look at them, they remind me of patinas. You know, sometimes you see on old boats, old furniture, wood, how when things wear away, how it, how the patinas come through, but this is how he does it. Um, he puts the paint onto the canvas or board, I'm not sure, probably a board. And then he scrapes it and he read, you know, a lot of artists use a paintbrush and will keep working with the paint until they get the image that they like, but he will keep scraping at it. Um, it's like a squeegee almost. And um, that's how he gets those layers. So um, he also is a photographer, and you can see, I think, from these photographs why he falls under meditation. They have a very, they're very quiet. He used his daughter a lot as, a, as his model for his subject. This kind of reminds me of that windshield wiper one by Wolfgang Timmons in photography. Here's another one of his paintings. You know, um, it almost feels like reflection in water to me a little bit. Yes, there's his daughter. I believe that's his daughter. Uh, Cloud series. The next artist is uh, French and uh, he, his name is Eugene Ache. I think I'm saying that right, A-T-G-E-T. -E and um, he, uh, he lived in Paris and uh, he felt like um, at the time that uh, Paris was going through a lot of changes, it was starting to become more modern and he felt like he wanted to just capture uh, this era and this time. Um, so he just went around, he took a lot of photographs of his city just um, documenting really what life was like at that point. Really beautiful shadows in these, I think. I'm not really sure what's going on here. Looks like water and maybe they're working on the street or I don't know. Beautiful use of light again. Look at how it reflects. It almost it's like glowing from a window source, I think. Looks like it from one side, and then how it lights up the stairs and then they get dark as they go up. 
This also really plays with the light. This would be a very good example of repetition, rhythm and repetition. Although we're done with that now for this class, we won't be <laughs> going through those anymore. Store windows. It's, you know, it's kind of cool about store windows is uh, how you get what's in the store window, but you can also see the reflection of the city too. So you, it's two photos in one. This next artist is Lucian Freud. And that name sounds familiar. Um, his was, yes, his grandfather was Sigmund Freud, the um, famous uh, psychologist. And, um, uh, you know, e even though he's a painter, uh, this is a self-portrait, his uh, paintings actually are kind of, I, I think you could say they're sort of psychological in nature because he, um, he doesn't, he's not painting like portraits uh, to flatter anybody. It's more like showing people in a particular way of being. So like I said, this is a self-portrait. These are all people that he knew. You know, it's weird. You never noticed this before. But you know, I said it's like Sigmund Freud. Uh, they look like, let's see, let me go back here. Yeah, it's almost like, I mean, she's laying back in a bed, but you know, the stereotypical um, analyst, you know, like, you know, I don't know that people really do that, but they always show on TV, like the, um, like the, the psychologist talking to the patient and the patient's laying back on a couch. She's laying back, she's laying back, he's laying back. I love, uh, you know, in, these, in this painting, like just look in his forehead, how many colors there are when you start to really break it down and all the, how you really, uh, see the brushstrokes, like if you zeroed in just on his forehead, it would look like an abstract painting. He's laying down, but he doesn't look like he's at the psychiatrist office. Um, this next artist is uh, Joseph Albers. This is when we uh, get into the artists that are breaking things down and he is, uh, like the, the go-to person for color theory. He, um, that original slide I just showed, not original, but the last slide, um, but he was considered a Bauhaus artist. And, but he uh, has written books on color theory. And if you've taken a, if you take a color studio class, like an art studio class, usually uh, you'll have, at least if not his textbook, there'll be, uh, or one of his books, so he will be brought up because he really worked with how colors look next to each other. So if you look at this, um, these two panels right here, that yellow or gold color in the middle, it's exactly the same color, but just by placing it, when you see on the pink side, how, how much more vibrant it is and then how it, uh, well, I guess it's vibrant both ways, but you can see it, it, it affects the way you're, you view it. The color doesn't change, it's your, the way you view it next to it. Same with this one, the uh, brownish colored squares are the same color. Here he is playing with, uh, I guess, not play, I guess analyzing might be better. We talked about this in the uh, visual elements, how complementary colors will, um, when they're the ones that are across from each other on the color wheel and how they will uh, create like a, an effect in your eye where, where it makes your eye go back and forth. So it, it brings attention to it. This is also has an edge of its complement around the, the center circle. 
Uh, this next artist is Gabriel Orzoco, and uh, he lives, uh, he's, I think, American and Mexican, or he works in both countries, and or, uh, he works all over anyway. At this time, he was doing this artwork. He didn't really have a studio, so he just kind of used the world as his studio, and he, um, you know, we talked about found objects before. He Here he went into a grocery store and um, arrange things in a way <laughs> that was like a installation. Here's objects that he collected and uh, laid out. Kind of reminds me of Sarah Z with all of her pieces. And he also made games. Here he looks, definitely looks like a drinking game, but uh, here's some uh, game that, that he made up. Here's another game, uh, ping pong, but it looks like it has a, a pit. <laughs> Uh, and here's a soccer ball that um, I think would be pretty hard to play soccer with this. I guess you would just mow the other team down. And a pool table, but it has no pockets. So you would just endlessly play, I guess. <laughs> it never ends. Not sure, but another game. Uh, here's another artist, talk about dissecting things. He would take whole buildings. Uh, his name is uh, Gordon Mata Clark, and he uh, would find abandoned buildings or buildings that were gonna be torn down that uh, he could, um, uh, rather than build sculpture, he would actually cut uh, into them and create shapes and new light sources. So here you can see this house is like cut down the middle. And then when you look inside of it, here are pictures that show how that light opens up this abandoned house. Here's a building that was um, gonna be torn down. And so he cut this hole in the side and here's what it looks like. So this reminds me a little bit of when we talked about um, uh, remember the Rauschenberg erased painting where he actually took a painting and then erased it. And then also um, Banksy had his, um, that piece that he shredded. You know, when sometimes the destruction of something becomes the creative act, it's kind of a twist. It's a little bit hard to look at, I think, but you can see these holes cut into the forest. It actually looks kind of dangerous, but that's me. Uh, this artist, his name, he is a Spanish artist. Once again, I'm gonna hope I don't butcher his name, but it's El Bulli Ferran Adria. And he um, used food, not just food, but he had a restaurant where it became, food became kind of like a performance. And uh, he made these um, uh, wild kind of uh, food products. <laughs> uh, I'll show you some pictures. He had a restaurant and this restaurant was so popular, uh, uh, you know, considered um, to be like a really uh, good restaurant that he would, op he would open it once a year and it would be open for a certain amount of time. And on the first day that they opened, they would fill every reservation. They would <laughs> reserve all, the re all of their slots um, uh, until the restaurant closed. And uh, it was so popular, but uh, he, well, I'll come back to that. Anyway, that's him. And so he, um, I, I'm not sure what you kind of call this food. I know there's a place in Chicago that does this too, where um, they'll have like the essence of foods, like the, like, you know, this foam might taste like shrimp cocktail or something where they uh, do all of these kind of creative uh, things with food that um, kind of transform it. So these are some of his, some of the things that he uh, did that makes, makes it like art. And then he also, like when I said his performance, he would kind of map out the whole, like the whole thing, like here's the map of the culinary process. 
here's some, when I said food product, these are some of the, the things that they made that they would put, put the, so, you, so you would end up with, I think like a series of plates of, of these uh, food, food is art. He uh, eventually, I read, uh, he, there was like kind of a lot of pressure <laughs> on him. So, and people were coming, they wanted to learn, they uh, would work with him. So he finally just switched it to being more of a school where he'd start teaching other people how, how to interact with food. Um, you know, he, he felt like the whole thing was an event, not just the food, but the, you know, the presentation and um, all of it. It was uh, uh, like art. Um, this, uh, when we go back to our artwork would be back to our abstract art. Uh, that we talked in the beginning we talked about different kinds of art maybe some of them would be you could say non-representational or abstract and this woman is charlene Char, charlene van von he um, heil charlene von heil she's german and but she works in new york i believe and uh, she makes these abstract paintings that you could get lost in and they're very large This artist, I have uh, two videos for you to watch about him. I, don't, I only have three videos today and two of them are about uh, this man. And his name is um, another one I hope I don't butcher, but it's El Anutsi. Uh, he is originally, um, he's based in Nigeria. I think he's originally from Ghana and he um, uh, works in Africa and he uses all recycled materials. And he has um, in the videos, the, one of the videos, they're both short videos, but one of them he's talking about his artwork and what his artwork is about. And then the other video shows him working with his uh, crew and how they make these. And um, if you're into recycling at all, uh, you will be fascinated because all of these are recycled materials. And each time he see how it's hung up on the wall, when he makes these, um, every time they hang them somewhere, like this, when this is exhibited, and then when they exhibit it somewhere else, they put it up a different way. So uh, all the folds in it, it, it uh, are not there permanently. That's the way that they installed at that time. So they're also always changing. Here's one that's hanging. And you can see they're like, you know, really beautiful compositions, like uh, paintings, large paintings, but then up close, these are all, I think bottle caps. They're all, or maybe parts of tin cans that have been flattened. And then they uh, put holes in them and wire them together. So I mentioned that he has a crew here. Here they are putting, um, putting this up to, to look at it at the studio outside so that where they can see, see what it looks like. Here's another close up. So if you see, watch the video and you'll see how they, how they make them. It's uh, pretty interesting, I think. And then he'll also, here's uh, another one where you can see how, how they, the way it's arranged, the, it adds a dimension to it. And he shows some other work uh, that he did also in there yet. Like these, this is, uh, they're sculptural. They're made the same way, but instead of hanging, they're kind of uh, folded around on themselves to, to create like, it's like a little army of sculptures. This next artist I think is really uh, fascinating also. And her name is Agnes Dennis. And um, she uh, uses, these are diagrams that she has done. Um, if you go on her website, you'll see that uh, she makes, she works, um, she works with the earth though also. And let's see here, here's uh, where she planted a wheat field in New York. Then they actually harvest, harvested this. You can see it happened. Before. There's a twin tower still there, but so it was a while ago, but the wheat field was harvested. <laughs> uh, so it's kind of like a, earthwork installation piece. 
But these are the ones that I am really kind of fascinated by. Um, if you can read that, it says uh, Tree Mountain and uh, it's a living time capsule. So it says 11,000 trees, 11,000 people, and I think it's 400 years. I can't see that very well here, 400 years. So what she, this is like a diagram. And uh, I believe it's like they build it up like a little mountain. So each one of those dots is a tree. So people each bought a tree um, and then it'll take 400 years for all the trees to actually grow into the sculpture. So it's really like leaving a sculpture for future generations. Here's, yeah, here you can see from the side. So they made this um, mound and then planted all these trees on it and it will, uh, so it's, um, it looks like it's in Finland. So, uh, it, it's like an earthwork, but it's also um, why well, it's called time capsule because the future generations will get to see how it, how it came out. <laughs> and uh, look, she did some other, if you go to her website, she has some other pieces like that too that where uh, they're meant to be in the future. And then this is also an artist that works with uh, nature. And um, I have shown this whole video in class before. Uh, it's a good video, but I have included, this is the other video that I have. It's a trailer from a movie that he did. It's, well, it's a movie about Andy Goldsworthy and it's called Rivers and Tides. This guy is amazing. He, um, he is uh, from Scotland, but he works and he works uh, there a lot, but he also uh, goes all over the world. Um, uh, he uh, definitely that word site specific where he makes the sculpture for the site. So he uses only things from nature to create uh, the artwork. So here are where he collected these leaves put together. Here's where he put like flowers. He kind of smushed them into these trees to make a red line. Um, he will go out and with his bare hands, like put uh, ice, you know, icicles together and make these large sculptures. I mean, uh, you, you have to watch the video. I actually recommend you watch the whole video if you ever have time. It's called Rivers and Tides. And uh, here is like out in the woods. So he won't even use like any wire or nails or anything. Like if he wants to put things together, like leaves, he'll go find thorns. So everything is from uh, nature. This one, for example, um, this would all be like these reeds, but then he um, put them, he did, you know, found thorns to attach them together. And as you can imagine, they don't always work out. So when you see the little, I don't, I'm not sure if it's in the, in the movie, definitely, there's one where he's been working on it and, and it, a big wind comes and, you know, blows it all apart while he's, after he's been spent all day working on it. And um, he, uh, you know, he, he seems deflated. He kind of just like kind of collapses in defeat. And then he gets back up and starts doing it again. He just like, well, you know, there, there you go. So with his work, it, it, what, remember when we looked at Sarah Z's work that did the installations and I said a lot of the way her work would be recorded um, because she would, you know, install these things and then they would be taken down. So the photography of it is the way of actually, you know, keeping a record or, or having records of the works. Andy Goldsworthy, he, um, there's books about him, uh, like a lot of like these kind of tabletop books with big, beautiful pictures of the work that he did. And uh, it's, you know, it's pretty much documented. There's some of them will last. Uh, the, I've heard me mention Meyer Gardens in Grand Rapids. They do have a piece of his there and he made this large archway that you can walk through and it's stones piled up into this archway. And he uh, had the stones brought over from Scotland because they had this particular color of red that he wanted to use the color of the rocks. And so uh, that piece is there, you, you know, you can see it, but uh, a lot of these pieces are, you know, meant to uh, 
uh, you know, be um, like maybe almost the way you think of performance art. Like it, it was, it, it was not really meant to last. It was meant meant to happen, but maybe not to last. So that's the way. So the movie is a good uh, documentary of him and and work. So that's uh, the artist. Art is meditation. And um, yeah, that's it. So uh, we'll be, we have a few more chapters and then uh, I know we have a week off for, uh, we have a spring break week in April and um, I'll have to figure out, um, uh, I'm gonna try to give you the, your final project a little bit early because it took me a long time to get all the midterms done. And, uh, you know, some of you might wanna just maybe get it done early and it helped me out to get some in early too so I can get them all graded on time. So um, anyway, uh, uh, that's it. I'm gonna quit talking and uh, talk to you next week. Bye-bye.